So, first of all, Shift Happens, I know you, I, I guess you all somewhat know about the game. It's a co-op game. It was specifically designed to be co-op and um, you can shift your mask. So, let's dive in. Uh, shift Happens, a five-year evolution. Can you, can you? Yes, uh, it's a nice little game. Um, for everybody that can't really read it, it's a YouTube comment on one of the Let's Plays that we received, and it, it says like, nice little game, but why do you develop this in early access? Ideally, programming a game like that takes one day or a weekend, and then not a not even finished version for 15 euros. Capitalism at its finest, I'd say. Next. <laughs> so, <laughs> it somehow sums up uh, a lot of, like the feelings you go through when we read stuff like this, it's like, okay, um, yes, a weekend for that game, it's uh, a nice estimate, but it's not really like that. On the other hand, five years also sounds like a very long time, and uh, to make you realize or to show you why it took us that long, um, we have to dive into the clock timeline, and um, yeah. Clonk Games, by the way, um, is a company of 10 uh, students, uh, like former students. We began our studies in 2010, and back then we called ourselves Team Headless uh, in the first semester. And um, there we had the, the task to, to create a game idea, and we always wanted to make a true co-op game. And um, so we started to make a first prototype in 2011. Uh, it was a, for the 2D project in uh, Adobe Flash, and the goal was to design a true co-op game, which you can like see over there. And um, so we uh, finished the 2D project, and we always tell, told ourselves, okay, we want to finish what we started, because that's the most important thing to finish the project. Um, for all you students here, it's like, I think that would be the, the very, very biggest lesson I can give you because like, even if it sucks or even if you think it sucks, just go through it and try to finish it somehow to, to make it uh, something that someone can play uh, on their own. And even if it's like not good or whatever and if it has bugs, it doesn't matter, but finish it. And that's what we wanted, so we said, okay, we have to release it on uh, Congregate. Uh, Congregate, I don't know, uh, it's a Flash site and yeah, that's what we did. And then, in the end of 2012, we started with Unity, and we visited our first Gamescom with the game. So then we started to develop the game for our uh, next project. It, it, it's supposed to be a 3D project in the studies that we have. We were studying at the uh, Media Design Hochschule in uh, Munich, and um, there we have to do a 3D project, so we thought, okay, we like the idea, so let's put that into 2.5D, like, so we, we can use 3D, but it's still like uh, 2D logic of the game, so why not develop it further? And uh, we also saw a lot of potential in the game, and we saw, okay, we can do it way, way, way better. And uh, yeah, so we put it in Unity. We also developed a single player. We tried to find an art style. We finished our bachelor's degree. We found Company Clonk. We get, got funded by the FFF. It's uh, the... Förderungs, Filmförderung, something, something. <laughs> I forgot. Filmförder for Bayern. Filmförder for Bayern, genau. And uh, yeah, we did also our first, first contract work uh, with the income um, in cooperation with the Deutsches Museum. It's like a learning app or something. In 2014, we found our art style. It's like a low poly art style. And uh, we, uh, Bismo and Plom were born, our two main characters. Uh, Bismo is the red one and Plom is the blue one. We went to a lot of fairs and tried to get a publisher, and we did more contract work. And in 2015, um, Deck 13, I don't know, uh, it's a developer based in Frankfurt. I don't know if you heard of them. They did games like Lots of the Fallen and uh, some point and click adventures, uh, Anubis and whatnot. And uh, they came to us and they said like, hey, we like uh, Shift Happens. Do you want to like cooperate with us? together, and um, now they are somewhat our publishing partner. They help us with marketing, and um, they also help us with um, getting the game on Xbox One right now. And they do a lot of QA for us. So, yeah, so we had to go through Steam Greenlight as well. Uh, we had to go 
we are currently also in Steam Early Access, and yeah, we developed the online co-op, and Mercury Shift 3D, as it was called back then, finally became Shift Happens, and we received the Xbox One dev kit. <laughs> and yes, 2016, we won the uh, German Developers Award um, this year in the categories uh, Best Game Design and Best Kids Game, and uh, we were very happy about that, obviously. Um, right now we are porting the game to Xbox and PS4, and we are still doing contract work, and we still have to get filthy rich. <laughs> so, uh, that's us. Uh, when we finished our bachelor's degree, uh, that's the whole team. We are 10 people, and uh, yeah, we were all students, and we've known us. Here, uh, Matt still has his, his hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost my hair uh, during the time. So, uh, a rather weird evolution. Um, we always had the problem like, okay, um, we, we, never, we always had that mechanic in mind, uh, the, the co-op mechanic, we, we, we designed the shift and that's the different characters we had over the years. And um, yeah, well basically the, the only Finnish characters are the, the grayish ones, <laughs> I don't know, like uh, on the, the left with the green eye and the red and Bismont Plum. So yeah, that's the, the small evolution we went through. And uh, yeah, Mercury Shift 2D uh, started as a first semester idea. And it should be a game about real cooperation. It was always a priority. And uh, we developed it in Adobe Flash. Uh, it was released in Congregate in 2012. And it was also a nominee at the German Developers Award in 2012 for the best student concept, but we didn't win. Unfortunately, so why so co-op? We always thought co-op. Uh, we always we were like, okay, there's so many games where you can play a single player. Like I don't know um, what comes to mind. Maybe a Rayman Origin or something. You can. It's designed for a single player, and if you put another one, you can play it co-op as well. But it's not really co-op because like you're just running around um, uh, next to each other and. The other one doesn't really matter. You can have fun there, and it's fine. But we also said, okay, we like want to have a, a mechanic that um, really forces co-op. So that's why we said, okay, let's change your mouse between each other. Both players can shift, and both players are affected by the shift and affect each other. Therefore, and uh, it forces communication. Yes, no, it's no problem. <laughs> and so, in 2011, then we had like our first. Experiments and concepts, that's a concept by, by Robin, and uh, we always thought, okay, they're gonna look like robots. So uh, why not changing your mass and robots, but probably like a transformer or something that would look really awesome, cool. And then they started to look like this in Flash, uh, because we were students and we didn't really have a lot of experience. So they were like golem characters or what not. <laughs> So, and then we did uh, prototyping, and uh, well, prototyping is really, really important in games development, I'd say, and um, back then we didn't really know how to prototype, and we had a coder that was pretty good, and um, he could do small prototypes very fast, and we did fast iterative tests. We had no level design at all. If you want to check it out, it's back there. It's not, it doesn't feel like a game. It's like just running around and having no clue. There's no goal. There's no anything. And we just wanted to test test very fast. Is this idea going to work? And how is it going to work? And, and then, like, what are the controls? And we changed a lot of things. We tried out other mechanics as well, like throwing people around. And is that, is that how we would imagine it? And a few, a few things changed, and at first we had three sizes for the shift, and yeah, a lot of things changed, and, and, and we learned um, very fast how we want, to f want to, uh, the, f the game to feel. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we uh, needed um, a physics, a small physics engine called Box2D. Um, it's, uh, I think, a library for, uh, or like physics engine for box uh, for Flash, and uh, we used that for our uh, 2D project development. And uh, this was like our first, um, the look of our first milestone. It's 
again change, the characters change because we didn't have an idea, we didn't have a story, we didn't have a theme for the game. We just had that mechanic, this was cool, and we tried out stuff. <clears throat> then it started to look like this in the end of the, the 2D project, like four weeks later. We had better physics, we added objects like poles and seesaws. It's like um, when you throw someone against a pole and you shift mid-air and it gets thrown over, that was in there. And the seesaws that are like um, where the shift kind of like gets, uh, gets really cool or should get cool. And uh, the character movement was really weird and we never tested the character movement because it, like, it felt like they were in space like they were like floating all over the place. And we never changed that, and then it never occurred to us that we could change that, why would we? And yeah, we always focused very heavily on our level design, on our tutorials. And yes, so we started, that's what a level looked like in Flash for us, for us level designers at least. And um, yeah. <clears throat> That's with graphics, and uh, that's the second level of the game, or one iteration of the second level of the game, and the task was um, to, um, to, to build a, some kind of ladder with three crates in order to push a small ball up there to open the exit that was on the right. And um, as we found out, players were overwhelmed with that task in the second level of the game. And we always thought, why don't they get that? It's so easy to do because we played it 24 seven. And um, that was our first lesson, don't overwhelm players. <laughs> um, all those uh, tasks uh, may seem so easy for yourself because you're playing the game all the time. It doesn't really, it, it isn't really easy for, for a player that is new to the game. And also we try to tell players what to do by text and symbols that, were, that, that, were, that was in the background and no one got it and no one saw it because the feedback was really bad. <clears throat> so we tried to put boxes in there, tell controls via text and input pictures with, um, <clears throat> with controls input, uh, control inputs and also we still had in the first level way too many things the, p the player had to learn. There were so many... Um, controls like uh, you, ha you, you had to learn how the shift works, you had to learn how revive works, you had to learn how catching works, you had to learn how throw works, and so on and so on. And um, that's way, way too overwhelming for anyone. And we also implemented it very bad because like player could, couldn't read what they were supposed to do. <laughs> it's also something we had to learn. <clears throat> and then in the final version, it, it looked something like this. Um, it's a Give picture, it's a little bit slower, I guess. I don't know why, but um, we implemented those question mark boxes and we added some kind of animation feedback and then a small video that would show you what to do, kind of, at least. At least um, what we thought that would teach players, but we still had a lot of, lot of problems um, that people would actually get um, what to do because it was not always, always clear and the, sometimes the videos were just too confusing. <clears throat> so uh, the release on Congregate, we improved the tutorials, we had a new, new UI and menu, new level graphics, we added bonus levels, the shiftings became Mercury Shift, and we also implemented Google Analytics um, uh, for we tracked player data in, in terms of where players died or where they did some certain actions in the level. And then we could um, analyze that and, and get some data out of that. Um, we also did a, the, a, the whole analysis. There's, I think, in the info, you can check it out. It's, it's uh, interesting data, but it was not really like we had much insight from that. But we added it anyways. Um, so, the first is 3D experiments uh, Beth is going to talk about. And I'm gonna stay here because this is more like my thing to do. Um, hi, I'm Beth. I'm one of the later additions to, to Clonk Games. I was not developing with Matt um, on the 2D Flash game. I 
joined Klong in the fourth semester, um, where they started to um, try out Unity 3D. So I'm uh, developed shift happens just from Unity 3D, where it gets good. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Unity 3D um, was an uh, engine uh, that we used because in our studies, one of the uh, it, it was recommended by the, by the studies to use Unity 3D, so we had not much of a choice to use Unreal or Cry or whatever. Um, so this was a, a new technology for us to use. Um, we also had a lot of new ideas um, for the gameplay. For example, we, um, the um, 2D Flash game doesn't, it doesn't have um, triggers to open doors, moving platforms, and so on. And in the 3D project, we had a lot of, of new ideas and a lot of stuff to implement. Um, in the 3D uh, version, we still had the big character. Also, there's a small character, a medium character, I would say, and there was a large character. Um, I'm not sure in which build there is a big character, but um, at, at the start of Unity 3D, we still had this huge character. Um, but we took it out very fast. Yeah, um. because we always like uh, the idea was always like, okay, you re literally switch your mass, and what happens if someone dies? You, the the mass gets lost, and the other one sucks it up, so he has to get bigger. And that's why we had a bigger size, the large character, and um, the the small character was always like quirky and agile. The the medium character was a bit, uh, stronger but slower, and the big character was basically useless. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Um, and we did not really learn from that the robot characters was were not that good because the, one of the first character designs was robots again. Um, we, we thought it was really cool if they shift, they do like a transformer animations with this total bullshit because the shift actually is 700 milliseconds. No chance to put a nice animation there. Um, okay, um, we developed Shift Happens like one year without our artists, I would say. So a lot of the builds and a lot of the stuff um, we just did um, as level slash game designers in those dummy graphics. You, you see there um, this yellow statics and no graphics. And basically. programmers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so this is the very first level, yeah, not ever I would say, but one of the very first levels that we tested. Um, the funny part is, it's not that different from the final uh, first level um, of the game, but it's, it's, you have jumps and you must shift in the end and that's it. Um, I would say that was kind of good that this was the first level because it's actually not that bad. Okay, the, the camera is very bad. Um, the camera zooms out the whole level if the red guy as you can see, is, is in the right uh, corner and the blue character is in the left corner and the camera just zooms out the whole uh, level. Camera is one of the main things we did in the end, which was one of the best things we, we could do to improve the game. Um, this is, um, was the temple setting, we called it, because it was um, we had a 3D project at Studies. And the temple setting had textures, um, textures, and was not really the low poly style. I think oh. um, and the robots are gone, as you can see, um, and um, there are no boxes. Yeah. And <laughs> by the temple setting was going on, we already had the first single player ideas, single player mechanics. Um, so this is um, the, we called it Tony Garcia build. <laughs> it's a, a Unity guy. Um, we did the build for, for publishing reasons, um, to send it Unity for the publisher back then. And at this time, Bismo and Plum were born. Um, so i now going to talk about uh, um, the whole topic is the test chambers and the tutorials. Um, this is one of our first concepts for the test chambers and it's really like what it is today. Um, the test chambers are um, a kind of tutorial where you learn abilities. We don't have that much to learn in Shift Happens, you would think, but 
um, for new players who played uh, Jump and Run, you still have some actions that it's, they are not very normal, I would say, like a catch or carry or push and pull crates. This, this actions needs buttons or inputs that you must learn and therefore we uh, invented the test chambers. And for some other reason which I'm gonna talk later. So, so we also, uh, what I have to uh, add there is like, as you uh, saw, like we always um, had those uh, small insights that like people wouldn't really get what the hell was going on, what they had to do, and they were always overwhelmed, as I said before, and, and the test chambers were like our way to, to put the, the players into an environment uh, where they, they have to learn something, but it was also our, it was always like our uh, intention um, to not really show them that it's a tutorial. That like was the very, the, the, the biggest, uh, biggest idea behind the test chambers, they were like small levels and they were also like a little bit um, 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 somewhat from from portal where you always constantly go through uh, test chambers and get tested kind of and learn new things while you go through them. Yeah, One of the things um, why we created the test chambers are uh, uh, force players to do the thing you must learn at least once and in the test chambers there are always two chambers in the multiplayer, so both players must do that ability at least once. Um, because this was one of the problems, if, if, if you have a test chamber where both players are in one test chamber, um, there often was the problem that only one player did the puzzle to um, finish the test chamber, but the other one had no idea how to push or pull the crate, for example. Um, the test chambers are in a safe environment, um, to doesn't overwhelm players at a mud set already. This was, uh, was a thing, like in the, in the, in the uh, 2D flash versions, the second level has like three new abilities and five new objects and that's uh, way too much. Um, that, that's all also very important because um, both players can finish the test chambers, the tasks they have to do on their own. If I finish the test chamber and learn how to push and pull, um, the other one must finish the two. To and okay, the problem with the test chamber was that we have two characters. Um, if you must learn to jump or push, pull a crate, you don't really need two characters. But we also we always wanted to stay on our story. <laughs> And our game design creator was always that we have two characters and so there must be always two characters in every level. So players don't get confused or the game it starts to get confusing, we thought. <laughs> um, also, obviously players learned to handle these two characters. So this is one of the very first test chambers ever where you learn to jump over this little uh, edge, ledge, and you must simply get both characters onto that platform to finish the test chamber. So th these are the shift bags or the shift dolls, we called it. Um, that was an idea we were not that we, we didn't like the idea that we, we must use two characters in each test chamber for both players. So we, we thought, okay, how, how can we do um, that the mass change is still realistic? So well, well, the thing was, like, the, the problem is the shifting is like they connect two players, right? And uh, shifting um, means you always affect the other player. And, uh, but in the test chambers, we wanted that people learn on their own pace. So that kind of, like... Um, it, it was hard for us like to say, okay, that's the shift, um, that's how it works, you can affect each other and you always, uh, you get on your nerves uh, with, uh, with, with shifting all the time, but uh, how are we going to like prevent this? So um, then we could like say, okay, we just break the shift and we, we, we try to um, change it. And, and we wanted to try it with, with some kind of element that's really there. So that's why the shift bags, uh, shift bags came, came as an idea, like, okay, um, in the test chambers we said the, the, the characters don't shift with each other, but they shift with the shift bags. And that's why they were put in there. Yeah, but we, 
we realized that nobody gets the idea and they just thought, what well, is this a funny object I can throw around, but they had no idea that you s s shift the mass with the bag and whatever. <laughs> it doesn't, didn't work. That's also very important. If a player um, um, carried a bag and throwed it away, they doesn't learn from that action that they can also um, take a, a small player, which is very important in the later level, and throw a, a player around. So this tr transfer uh, also didn't work. The shift machines um, are the next what? step from the shift bags. Uh, what, um, do we, what do we mean that shift machines are those things? They're like the next steps. Like we replaced shift bags with shift with machines. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, the, the shift bags um, were actually in the level. You can um, collide with them, you can pick them up. Um, but that was um, confusing for the players. And so we thought, okay, we put these machines outside the levels, um, but the shift is still there. If you change mass, the shift machine gets filled with this flu fluid and it's still realistic and we didn't harm our credo. But um, a little bit later, we realized that that's pl players don't get that. Um, they couldn't realize that the story behind that because we don't had, uh, didn't have the story at, at this point. Um, and so we just um, throw that all aboard. Um, Yeah, so the final version simply is like, is like the, the, the player shifts with himself, kind of, and we were like, okay, uh, fuck it. Um, it's like, uh, we don't need an explanation why the player now can shift on their own. And uh, so we said like, okay, they, they now are shifting on their own, so everybody can learn what they have to learn, and we can assure that they know um, all the stuff to proceed for the next levels, and yeah. The, the test chambers kind of clearly stand out from the, the level flow. They, they, they feel like somewhat of a tutorial, but they're still like a playable tutorial with almost no text. I mean, there's text in them, throw them, but that's about it. And like, we always wanted to, to focus the okay, people are uh, supposed to play our game, not read our game. And that's because we, ha we hate tutorials that, that are text heavy. And it's a simple game. Everybody should be able to understand it. Yeah, some, some good side effect we had um, was that we have always like this, this split screen thing that if you play uh, local co-op or online co-op, you always see both test chambers. You see your own test chambers and your buddy's test chamber. So if you are a newbie and don't get it how to finish the test chambers, you can see the other one solving that test chamber. And that was a nice side effect because it often helps those players. Of course, we... It, it was inconsist uh, inconsistent for our gameplay and our story, and we was we wasn't that. Uh... Well, we 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 weren't so happy about uh, that, but yeah. Uh, what if uh, both uh, players um, are newbies and can't and <coughs> can't help each other? Um, we also have like um, those um, uh, those little things there, and. Um, they are still like a relic from, from the 2D project as well, but they uh, uh, are implemented a little bit smarter and um, they, um, they are not always there. So somebody that grabs it very easy what to do never sees them because he just can do it on his own or on her own. And, um, but for people that struggle a lot, we um, increase um, the information that, that the player gets. So, at first, you just see the X over there, then you get another picture where the box has to go, and then you get another picture and maybe another picture, so until it gets crystal clear. Um, for the thing that like people um, don't get it like because they don't have the skill like technically, um, that's something we really can help players with, which is can show them what literally to do, and um, yeah. That's in the control. Sometimes people struggle with uh, like um, tapping X, and uh, that was always a big problem for us. But uh, we we could not never really 
fix it 1000% because sometimes someone has a, has a controller that's, that is a little bit clunky or whatever and sometimes controllers feel different and then something, sometimes it doesn't work as well as with another controller for example and yeah. It's still not perfect but I think it works very, very well. Yeah, our level design credo. Um, we always wanted that everyone, and that was a way too high um, thing that, we, that we, we, we thought we must do, is everyone should be able to play Shit Heavens. Little child and old people, if you never played a game, if you want to play Shit Heavens, you can take the controller in your hand and start playing. But that didn't really work, and that I, I would say that that can't work. I think, yeah, I, th I think it never works and it's kind of insane to actually try to do that and it's also from a marketing point of view probably very dumb to do, but what we always did was like take the game and take it home and let my mom play the game and then my mom would horribly fail at the game and I was like, damn, how can I, how can I make her succeed at the game and the problem with that is kind of my mom is not really a uh, a technical person she doesn't she does never play games at all and um, it's kind of an effort that you don't really have to do and it doesn't work so not everybody probably will get the game and whatever but um, we always wanted that <laughs> we always tried to do that at least and that's probably why we iterated so much on all the levels and but I think in the end it, it at least made the levels better Yes, that's the uh, interruption of gameplay flow. The test chambers are like, we don't really want it that because um, players' um, experience while they're playing, ah, I'm in a tutorial right now. That's not good. We wanted players to just play the game and th 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 Dan doesn't really get, ah, I'm, I'm learning at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm learning a game because learning is not fun. Learning is work, work and work is not fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but playing a game is fun. Um, but it's very hard to implement a tutorial that is transparent, so the players don't really experience it as learning. Um, but I think we did a good, good job in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and, no and, and we have no text in the game. Well, except for uh, the aside the menus or whatever, but and, and we never literally go. You have to put the crate on that button over there or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I already explained that. Always, both players have to do a task in the test chambers, and yeah, I'm going. To, uh, the learning curve is coming up pretty soon. Uh, lots of playtests. We had the um, the good thing for us was we we were uh, students at the um, MDH in Munich, and, and there are always a lot of playtests. And one thing I'm proud of is that we tested the game a lot. We had like always like a hundred students, game design students, that we can take to our game and just show them the game and say start playing. And playtest is, is one of the important, uh, important uh, thing, you, you must do it to, to design a, a, a good game. game. <laughs> it's always, people always never do what you expect them to do and, and then you have to find out and analyze why they are doing that and sometimes you don't even want it but like for a level uh, for a game that is so linear and so straightforward as shift happens we we as level designers always want the people what we expect them to do so that's how we design a level and we w we want them to do specific stuff and there's not much sandboxy room in in shift happens but um, it always has to work out some somehow and yeah and as we already said, so the test chambers and the tutorial, I would say, had the most iterations of all levels. Uh, and the first stage is the most place, uh, tested uh, stage of the game. And also the stage we, where we discussed a lot. We, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the laboratory is the first stage. So this is like, um, um, this is, one of the first prototypes, this is how the, the, the difficulty level and the, the, the level looked um, in the first prototype. I don't know if we, if, if we have it here, but um, as you can see, after level three or four, the, the, game's, the game's getting harder. And that's not good because the first two levels should be easy, that's okay, and level three 
can be moderate, that's okay, I would say, but um, you, you can't make a jump and run where level five is extremely hard if you want to make like 40 uh, levels in the end. So Well, you can make it, but then you have a, another target audience because then they are hardcore gamers and play Super Meat Boy, but not Shift Happens. So that's what we had to keep in mind. People, uh, that's not a hardcore game what we were making. We were like making a small puzzle, uh, a nice little game. <laughs> <coughs> So these are some uh, iterations later. Um, we included the test chambers. That was ob obviously good, but um, a, little, uh, a little bit later in level three or four, um, we just started again with like levels with 100 death areas and ultra complex puzzles that was just dump. So we came up with this. This is uh, the final result. Um, the blue boxes are test chambers, so we have in single and multiplayer uh, five test chambers where you learn um, push-pull, um, throw, and, and all that stuff. And uh, always after what test chamber is uh, what we call a, a, a trainings level. It's a level where you must use that learned ability from the test chambers. What's also uh, nice to mention, I guess, is like that, that we, uh, on, on that moment in the test chamber one where, where you learn to push and pull, you, you always will need push and pull here as well, but you will never really need it here necessarily, but you can probably do it before, um, or you, like, can, you can even throw each other around in level one. If you learn it on your own, then it's great for us. If you, if you know it already, why, why would we force you to, to, to learn it in a, in a boring way? And uh, that's like probably the, 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 the coolest thing we, we achieved uh, with this kind of stuff. Okay, the next topic is the single player. Um, we, we always wanted to make a great co-op game. Um, a co-op game, you obviously need <laughs> more than one player, but we still wanted to do a single player. Um, for publishing reason, reasons, one of our lecturers said um, you will need a, a good single player to get a publisher to get money. <laughs> um, obviously, said we wanted that. <laughs> um, also, we can provide more content with the single player, and a lot of people think, if you play a jump and run, I want to play it alone. It's nice if it's if it had a, a good co-op, but jump and runs in general are single player games. So, um, the problem is, we basically designed the perfect seesaw. Um, a good co-op game. You really need the other one to solve the game. You can't play um, the multiplayer levels on your own. And that design part was good and, yeah, not finished, but it, it was there and we, we, we were proud of that. And now we needed a single player. So if you are on the seesaw and you took the other one away, it's not very fun to seesaw on your own. So uh, <laughs> you can do it, but it's, it sucks. So what we did, it's not that good, but we basically put a, a, a zombie by your side, the inactive character, you can swap in the inactive character, to control it, and now you play both characters. You, you know from the multiplayer, but you can play it in single player. But sometimes it falls down, then you have to pick it up again, put it on a seesaw, and uh, it's not that much fun, and yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's why we, we call the inactive characters, the gray ones, um, the, the zombies. Um, so what is the, the thing about single player? Um, when you come from a co-op, um, perspective. The first question is, what is with the second character? How are you gonna do that? We can program an AI. We didn't want it that. Yes, uh, we didn't want an AI because it's, um, we always thought like back then it was, um, I think 2013, still, still our studies last semester. And we were always like, okay, back then we were like, we have to finish the game now finally, like in two months, or we have to get it done. So we can uh, 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 code an AI for that. It's probably too complex, or at least it's like, it, it takes us too much time and effort to do that. So, well, let's cut that out, because like an AI will never really uh, do that cool stuff that you um, have with our uh, communication cooperation stuff, what happens in Shift Happens, because uh, people always started to communicate, have fun with each other, and with an AI, that's not fun. It's not gonna happen that we are be, uh, being able to achieve that in such a short amount of time. 
So then we said, okay, let's play with only one correct character at all time, which we literally do now in the very first level of Shift Happens. Um, but we always had our level design creators in mind, and we always wanted to have like, the, I th I'd say the biggest problem with the shift was that we didn't have a real good metaphor for it. So basically, um, how are they able to switch the mass between each other? There's no, no, no thing between them where the mass go through them, and we always thought, okay, it has to be a good metaphor or whatever, and uh, then at least we need the two characters where the mass can go to. So with only one character that can shift on its own, it's not a good game design. So we didn't want that, so no, <laughs> we didn't do it. And so the, the only choice was play both characters, but only one at a time and switch between or swap between the controls of them. So we tried to achieve that. And now it looks like this. You can simply swap between them and then you are controlling the other one. And uh, the one you, you aren't controlling is like a zombie. So this is, we called it the, um, the swap, and the swap had a lot of problems. Um, maybe the swap was one of the biggest design problems I, th I think we, we, we had uh, while developing sh Shift Happens. Um, controlling both characters um, simultaneously is, is it, it's not gonna happen in single player. You can do very hard uh, jump and run sequence in multiplayer where both players have to jump o over ledges and death areas and, and stuff. You, you can't build um, these levels in single player. So the level design is, is not the same as in multiplayer. It's a little bit slower and you, you always have, um, we always ha had in mind that, okay, if you have one character and go from A to B, you must swap to the other one and do the same thing again. And that was the next problem. Um, that players often have to go um, or, or, or solve a puzzle twice. Um, that's boring. So kind of, like you're always like you're walking with the one and then you have to take a swap into the other character and walk the same way that you just walked again. And this is like annoying for people simply. And also the camera logic of the multiplayer was not that great because we always tried to um, have the same camera logic as in multiplayer and uh, it, it's weird for people that you, that in multiplayer the, the camera always focuses the, the center of the two characters that are on the screen up to a certain point where the camera zooms out and then there's an out of screen. Um, but um, in, in single player this is somewhat doesn't feel that natural because like when as a player you're playing one character you, th you, you kind of expect that the camera always follows that one character not the other character. But we always wanted to keep all the mechanics um, that we have in multiplayer and don't really change them as much um, for the single player. Yeah, so, so we tried, what we tried, we tried to tackle this problem with our level design. That's why there is, each level in single player is not in multiplayer, so they are different and they are somewhat more puzzly and they don't have too much action. I mean, the game, has not so much action like a Donkey Kong or something, but um, we tried to tackle the problem with the with different level design approaches for the single player, so different uh, puzzles and yeah. So this basically is the the one of the the main problems of the swap. It's it's very much like the shift. Um, in in the top row, you you see. Um, the big red guy and the small blue guy, uh, guy, which is inactive. The big red guy is the active one. You played it right now with your controller. If you press the shift button, you're gonna shift to the small one. Well, you have to say, the, the, there's two outcomes for what the, the player, the player wants to achieve one thing. He wants to get smaller to get under something or whatever. And uh, he can do it by either shifting, then he gets small, or by swapping. And uh, this is like somewhat for the player, it's the same action or the same outcome basically because um, he at both, uh, both inputs made him smaller. Although he's playing the other character on maybe another place in the level, but it's the same outcome and that's what people always are still confused with and that's why the learning curve of the single player is very steep uh, in, the, in, in, in the beginning. 
And um, yeah, that's still a problem, and we, we never got to really, really um, fix it, kind of. And If you're going to play one of the prototypes or the, the final version um, later, you will experience that. If you, if you play Shift Happens for the first time and you play the single player, you will confuse the shift with the swap. And the problem is um, that we did not really fix it. <laughs> um, we thought, okay, the single player is harder to learn than our multiplayer. Um, but the, the good thing is the main um, group of players which gonna play Shift Happens are jump and run players in the end. They are experienced with co controller inputs and that stuff. So yes, in the, in the let's say, first 30 minutes of, of gameplay in single player, you will confuse that a lot, but training gets you better. Yeah, but it's like um, when people um, play the game, um, sometimes we experience also a lot of players that were like 10 or 12 playing the single player, the first stage of the single player in a half an hour. And we were like, okay, how, how are they able to do that that fast? And um, some people are not. And as, you, uh, as we mentioned before, we always had that, that kind of stupid idea in our heads that everybody should be able to play it. And well, sometimes, you, sometimes it's just not possible, I guess. Um, also, we obviously added a lot of feedback to improve that, the swap. Um, in, the, in the beginning, we didn't even have a swap animation or we didn't have an, an inactive character. It was just um, a, a grayed out. Um, and we, we also didn't have the, the active arrow. That's the little bumping arrow on the, on the active character if you swap. Um, these, this feedback helps a lot. Um, also, which is interesting, <laughs> At first we had like, uh, the shift button is always the, sh uh, you can change this in, in the controls, but this is our shift button, the, the right sh trigger. The right trigger. And at first we had the swap uh, on, the, on the shoulder buttons. That's the same finger and like two centimeter, centimeters difference. That's not good. And we, we, we changed the swap in, in the defaults on, on the right stick. Um, and it works like if you want to swap to the left, if your inactive character is on the left on the screen, you press the right stick to the left direction. So you always can swap in the direction that your uh, inactive character is standing. Um, this is the one default, and the other default we, we, we learned um, that it works very well is just, a, we call it a one button swap. So no matter where you press the left stick, it, it always swaps in the, in the inactive character. And this was the best solution we, we, we could find for this problem, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, the current version of Shit Happens um, has lots of stuff. <laughs> um, it has cutscenes that explain a little bit of our flat story. Um, and it has bonus levels, it has, well, online multiplayer, which is pretty important. Um, we have achievements, and yeah, we did a lot of bug fixes and hot fixes. We did so many fixes for the game, it's insane. And um, yeah, we, we also are still early access, and maybe some of you will think, okay, why the early access? And I think early access wasn't that necessary for us, um, because early access, Shift Happens is not really a game that's good for early access. I don't know if you, if you know early access. It's uh, Steam early access is you put a game that is not finished to sell or to, to on, on Steam to download for people. They can buy it and they can test it and they can give you feedback. And um, they can also uh, send in bug reports and to help you play the game. We basically did it for our online multiplayer because online multiplayer is hard to test in your own network uh, at, at the office or something. So um, that's why we needed players from all over the world. Um, to play test the online multiplayer and give us uh, some bug reports and stuff. That was like the main reason we put it there. Mm. And um, yeah, but shift happens for, for early access to work, I guess um, you need a game that is that had, has much more randomness, like a don't starve game where, we, where every playthrough is different from your last playthrough and not like a game you, a level you just played and you know how it works and you know the puzzles. And there's no real reason except for finishing it 100% to, to play it again. So the early access is kind of 
it's it's going positive. We, we I think we have 50 positive reviews and three negative ones, and those are only for the buggy multiplayer in the beginning of the the, the game, and that's it. But it it just didn't really impact the game a lot because well, it, like design changes weren't really made uh, on on decisions of the the Steam early access. Some people mention that they don't like. <coughs> They don't like the new UI or something like that, and we're like, okay, <laughs> that doesn't help us. And it's it it was also our way like to put the game out and and get it to people, um, and we we hoped that there would be maybe some kind of community community or something happening. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah, and um, what what definitely uh, definitely was good for us in early access was bug fixes um, and hot fixes and and just feedback from the players uh, about yeah bugs mainly um, and obviously the online multiplayer but we didn't get uh, very rich through early access. <laughs> <laughs> so shift happened five years. Um, I can't really say that's like we never had a full-time five-year development, obviously, because we were in our studies, and um, it's like there were not really five years where we were constantly working on a game. Uh, we did a lot of co contract work. I mean, we like did eight to ten projects during the development of Shift Happens just to stay alive as a small company because Shift Happens, as it is now, um, uh, we're not like getting rich with it. Uh, it's just on out on Steam Early Access and we will release it in a month probably and uh, we will get it on Xbox as well and we hope for the consoles to get strong for us but yeah, we have to do a lot of other stuff as well and it's also, this made uh, developing the game very um, hard as well. Um, yeah, the core concept still remains, which is kind of nice, actually. We still, I, I can't really tell if, if implementing a single player now was good, because we never really got a publisher that like was saying, okay, I give you um, so much development money and now make it good. And, uh, but we had, uh, we had a deal with uh, Deck 13 for just a marketing partnership, but they were not acting like a real publisher um, in that sense. So I can't really tell if the single player helped us get a publisher. <clears throat> and also sometimes I wonder if it was bad to implement a single player. Uh, that is not as great because maybe if uh, many people will pick up the game, just look at the single player and they maybe won't like it and say, okay, the, this game sucks. And, and then they will maybe never experience the, the cool multiplayer. <clears throat> But yeah, yeah. The strength, obviously, of this game is you, you you sit on a couch with your buddy or your whatever and have fun playing it co-op or online. Um, also, uh, we saw in the Steam backend you can see how much um, multiplayer achievements got unlocked and how much single player achievements got unlocked, and the multiplayer achievements are a lot higher, I think. So, we think that single player is not played that often um, compared to multiplayer on Steam early access. Yeah, um, the, <laughs> the story is uh, some of uh, a, a child we didn't want. <laughs> um, it's the black sheep. But we have a story, but the... Uh, well, it's, I think it's just the relationship we have to the story because, like, okay, we, we, we always came from that cool mechanic and we never had a cool story. And, I mean, Donkey Kong also doesn't have a good story or Rayman is, like, those simple stories that, like, okay, uh, you lost the princess or the princess got stolen and now get it back. And is, is that a good story? I don't know. And um, our story is basically now um, Bismon and Plum, they can shift on their own. They, um, in, in the very first two levels, they can shift on their own. And um, then they get into a, an accident, and they, the, their shift mechanic gets um, combined, and they get um, connected with each other. And uh, so um, they have to repair that machine that connected them, and that's their goal, kind of. And there's no real enemy or something like in the game. And yeah, it's, it's, it's not great, and we are not so happy about it, but it's OK. <laughs> <coughs> And I would say the people don't 
most people don't really care about the story. Um, they, they just have fun playing shift happens, uh, throwing each other around, put each other in, in death areas to get their coins or whatever and, and, and laugh at the game. Um, and I would love to make shift happens too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm the only one in my team. Um, all the others are very fed up with the game. Um, but I myself, I, I probably am the only one that really uh, plays also platformers at home. I love platformers and that's why I love Shift Happens, but not always. <laughs> it's somewhat a love-hate child of mine, of us. So, thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you.